the human species is under attack, once more again. SARS-CoV-2 show the vulnerability of us and our society against an invisible enemy. But what are these viruses? Where are they coming from? Are they alive? It's tantalizing to know there are no answers to these questions, only hypotheses and theories. To get an approach what they could be it could be helpful to go to the beginning, when life emerged from chemistry. Where ends the chemical evolution, and where begins biology? There is a big dispute in the science of biogenesis, what was first, proteins or RNA? And how both get together to a cell, to a working, living system? It's hard to separate these worlds, we know the molecule of both existed, and so it's likely that RNA and protein existed parallel and found some way together. The most likely thesis is that this happened in black smokers, hydrothermal sources on the ground of the ocean. What didn't exist there was cell membranes, so the pores of the smokers took the role of a cell. The chemical content didn't have the ability to create new cells but to duplicate itself. Beginning with a small amount of amino acids and a primitive RNA predecessor the systems got more complex, at a time the role of RNA to keep information was given to the new DNA. To get new place the chemical content had to take over another empty cell. But empty cells went rare and the proto-organisms got more aggressive, take over other proto-cells by killing the original content. In this moment the principle of virus was born. To escape that cycle some early life forms learned to create membranes. The cell was born. The duplication mechanism still worked, but the solution was the cell division. Cells divided into two cells and so on and so forth. The three domains of life, bacteria, archaea and eukarya used this way and was successful. But other organisms, keeping the aggressive robber strategy, begun to attack these cells to use their chemical factory. Cells begun to fight against viruses and so the longest war begun, a war holding us kept in our homes at time. Some researcher are convinced viruses are closer to the origin as any cell, I share this opinion. And really if we look at the different viruses we can see some way of evolution, from the small simple RNA viruses to the relative gigantic Mimi virus. The Mimi virus is as big as the smallest prokaryote Nanorchium equitans. How the name implies this cell rides on other cells. Its structure is not really much more complex than the structure of Mimi virus. It's well known that viruses have a high evolutionary rate, and so it's impossible to really date back them. It known from integrated DNA fragments that viruses was just active in the Mesozoic. It's very likely that they existed long before. All viruses common is their simple construction, consisting of genetic information and proteins. Their size differs between 20 and 440 nanometers. The smallest virus has a diameter of about 200 atoms. Smallest virus has about 1,500 nucleotides in their genetic information. Enough information to reproduce themselves. A group of viruses transport the genetic code in form of DNA. There are two form of DNA viruses, the Baltimore groups 1 and 2, named after the famous virologist David Baltimore. Baltimore 1 contains a DNA double helix, Baltimore 2 a single DNA string. Pox, hepatitis B, and herpes are examples for diseases spread by DNA viruses. Some of them are oncogene. The other viruses code their genetic information in form of RNA. There are two different groups of RNA viruses, the riboviruses and the retroviruses. Retroviruses contain an enzyme to transcribe the RNA into DNA, the reverse transcribase. In this way the virus intrudes the cellular core and begins to produce mRNA. A known representative of this group is the HIV virus, responsible for AIDS. The largest division are the RNA viruses. A classification is the polarity of their code. Is the polarity positive this means the code is directly readable by the ribosome. The direction to read the RNA is defined by markers for beginning and ending. The RNA of a virus with negative polarity is not readable for ribosomes and has first to be copied to a complementary RNA string. This complementary string can be interpreted by the ribosome. The third group contains both, positive and negative polarity, in a double string. So the positive string will be usable directly, 
the negative string has to be replaced by a complementary string. This is the smallest group, and for humans the least dangerous group. The group will divide it into 12 families. The negative polar single-stringed RNA viruses consist of 8 orders and up to 21 families. This group has a lot of very unpleasant representants, as the pathogen for Ebola, influenza A, B, C and D, parainfluenza, mumps, measles, pneumonia, rabies, Lassa fever, hepatitis D. The largest group are the positive polar single-stringed RNA viruses. This group consists of three orders and up to 34 families. And one representant of this group is at time the greatest troublemaker on Earth. One of the most problematic family are the Flaviviridae. This group contains the West Nile virus, Gadgets Gully virus, FSME virus, Tick-borne encephalitis virus, Dengue virus, St. Louis encephalitis virus, Yuzuda virus, Zika virus, Yellow fever virus and the Hepatitis B pathogen. Also the pathogen of the hog cholera is part of this group. The Ruby virus, the only genera of the family Matanoviridae, is the pathogen of rubella, a illness known as dangerous for the unborn fetus. Another unpleasant family are the Picornoviridae. Two genera are dangerous for humans. First is the enterovirus, this genus contains pathogens for polio, rhinitis, and meningitis. The genus Hepatovirus is responsible for hepatitis A. SARS-CoV-2 is part of the order Nidovirals. The family of Coronaviridae consists of three subfamilies. The infamous coronavirus is part of the subfamily Orthocoronavirini, this group consists of four genera, Alpha to Delta Coronavirus. In the Alpha group we find the human coronavirus 229E, a relative harmless virus attacking humans and bats and give a cold. The real problematic representants are members of the genus Beta Soronavirus. These pathogens attack several species, cattle, horses, birds, rats, bats, humans and a lot of other species. The subgenus Merbicavirus consists of four species, one is the MERS coronavirus, responsible for the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. Two other species attack bats. The actual pandemic virus is part of the subgenus Sarbicavirus. This species contains the pathogen of SARS, called SARS-CoV-1. The outbreak of SARS began in November 2002, about 1,000 people died. The new virus, SARS-CoV-2, had its outbreak in December 2019, on 3 January 2020, 44 people was infected. Four days later, the virus was identified as a new type of coronavirus. Within a short period the social and cultural life in China was driven down, but at this time the virus used the human transportation system and two months later most countries of the world are infected. We all are shocked because the rising value of victims, maybe except some presidents. The higher the population density of a region is, the more infections are counted. It's too early to spread optimism, but there are some facts that can let us hope. For first, thanks to modern technology, the code of the virus is known. This is not the healing, but an important step. Other institutes are working on a vaccine, and first experiments give us cause for hope. The genetic code of the virus is relatively simple, the RNA string has a length of 29,903 bases. The RNA contains a variety of genes to produce 10 different proteins, the largest contains 7,096 amino acids and is a replicase complex, other proteins are used for the core, the envelope, or some capsid proteins. The gene sequence is the same as in all known coronaviruses. The spikes are the key to enter a cell. Especially cells of the respiratory system are vulnerable because of their high amount of ACE2 and TMPRSS2 enzymes on the cell walls. The SARS-CoV-2 uses the ACE2 to attack and TMPRSS2 to enter the cell. The mechanism could help to treat patients by giving the drug Camostat to inhibit the TMPRSS2 enzyme. Examples like the coronavirus make us aware that the old war between cells and viruses is still active. It's the way the virus makes our lung cells to virus cells, with the primary function to replicate the virus. This is the aspect to see the virus as a living creature. 
Most viruses are harmless for humans, but they harm other species, plants, animals, archaea, and bacteria. So it's really true that the activity of viruses is mostly negative for life and economy. Otherwise shared viruses genetic information and was important for the horizontal gene transfer. Some viruses are candidates for their use in the medicine, best known example are the bacteriophages, to fight infections or cancer. Other modified viruses may help to perform genetic therapy, to repair genetic damages in the cells. Corona will keep our attention for a longer time, but finally it will find an end. The unknown factor is the amount of fatalities. And one thing is sure, the next viral attack will come.